So now I'm going to the recording mode. Do we push continue? Yeah. Oh. Yep. Okay. okay. So we have Robert, Trina, Dan, Jenny, Joanne, Nikki, Rara, where's, who else we Alex. got? Alex seems to be missing. Yeah, Alex is off on his deck or something when he does this. You know, we got to get Alex to log in. I can see people who have muted mics and who don't. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> Gosh, it could, only, if it could only be that easy normally. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's Alex. <laughs> Alex, are you in? He's inside now. There he is. I saw Jeannie. I got Mark. Yeah, there's a little arrow up at the top that will let you see everybody else. Really? participants some people don't like to show themselves so they're they're hiding their camera but okay so i think we're good so gallery view yeah we ready you want to come out of you want to report from closed session or do we go to call the meeting to order first don't we yeah, let's, uh, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order out and, and out of closed session. If you want to go ahead and give us a report, Mark. Um, do we approve this agenda or did we do that from the last one? We've already approved the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Discussion was in closed session was about uh, WTA negotiations and the board has looked over the material and we just discuss questions and I have some issues I'm going to get back to them with, but we kind of are preparing for negotiations, even though there, we haven't set dates or anything yet. This is all the work to go ahead and get started. Okay. Okay. Um, do we want to do a flag salute? It's kind of odd times. <laughs> Pledge allegiance, maybe? Certainly. Um, Begin. Yeah. Robert, do you want to uh, lead us in that? Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States, States of America, of America and, and to the, to the republic, republic for which it stands, for which it stands. For which it one stands. nation, nation under one God, nation under God, God. visible with liberty and justice, yeah, for, justice all. for all. Liberty justice. For our next Zoom Pledge of Allegiance, we just need to have one person say it. And because if everybody says it, the mic's bouncing all over. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Just a little tech info. So uh, we'll start off with the WTA comments. I do not see. I know she accepted the meeting, but I don't see her on. Okay, we'll move on to uh, Dan. CSEA. Yeah, I'm here. Um, yeah, it's been interesting times. Uh, we have uh, the uh, cookhouse staff. They're doing a great job over at the high school getting meals out. And um, they put a call out, so they're rotating the, every week the cook staff that's serving the meals. So everybody's getting a little time in to help out. We have uh, several people across working at different projects. And um, we're just 
trying to keep it all together as good as we can. Um, I and they're doing the best we can. Okay. Well, I want to give a little more kudos to CSEA because they're coming in. Custodial is going basically almost like a day, a day on, a day off with the evening and day shift. And maintenance comes in and does their thing because they all work kind of independently anyway. And I must say, I went into Spice Works, our ticket list for what needs to get done. They're all done. I did take a suggestion from Alex. I walked each site and took outside pictures of everything that needed to be fixed. Terry has those and now he's distributing them out to people who take care of those at each site. And cool. we also have some people, Dan, who in your group who volunteered to open up the media center for the high school from nine to noon, even though they don't generally don't work there, but they want to do something. So they're opening up the high school from nine to noon. So kids who need internet access can come in and get it. Okay. Um, is that still on? Cause the last I heard there might've been a couple issues that may stall that a little bit. Well, at Bechtel, Maria is going to do her own thing. But at the okay. high school, we're good to go. Okay. Good. The, other and thing, the other thing, Dan, you're going to hear is that your special ed paras are going to be asked to come in one at a time to help the special ed office to alphabetize all those mountains and files and cabinets of special ed stuff to put it in the new cabinets we got for them. Yeah, we talked about that today. I think it's great. Anybody wants to help. Um, I know that one, one thing that may bog us down a little bit with the library is um, we don't have a lot of mass and we can't get any. They're, we can't order them. Well, we can use something besides the normal grade mask. The yeah. mask requirement is just any protective face cover. Okay, so we may have to get creative with that with manufacturing some of our own. Because as far as store-bought ones go, we can't even get them from the supply company that supplies our janitorial supplies. Laura. So. Hey, Dan, I know that Linda Walker has been working on sewing them, so she may be a contact for that. Awesome. Yeah. And so has Laura Sleeper. Unless that was, did Linda put them on my desk, Nikki? Are those from Linda? I'm not sure who distributed. Okay. I believe that those are from, from Laura. Laura. Yeah, those were from Laura. Okay. The red okay. ones. Yep. So we have some people doing that, Dan. Math, awesome. math won't be our problem. Yeah, I, I know. It's just one thing that we have to realize that we're going to have to um, we're going to have to shoot from the hip and make our own stuff, you know, and yeah. take care of ourselves. I want to point out one thing with respect to these homemade masks. The people are. You know, basically it's a cotton fabric but most people are sewing up and they're wearing these things. Um, they're okay to wear for a couple of days, then they need to be laundered and then used mm -hmm. again. If they don't, they're basically, you're just breathing a bunch of bacteria into these masks and uh, you run the risk of uh, making yourself sick if you're going to continue to wear these things day after day without, uh, without sanitizing them. I've heard that using an iron after they've been laundered provides an extra level of that sanitation because the extreme heat from the iron helps kill stuff off. And I don't know oh, if that's I'm, true. I'm sure it does, but uh, whether you, you know, wash them in a, in, uh, or soak them in some bleach solution or uh, just launder them at the very minimum, um, it's a whole lot better than doing nothing at all. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been recommended that it's every every time you use it in, for the day that you scrub it in hot water. Dawn or some of those antibacterial dish soaps seem to be the best. And felt material is a really good filter if you can't get the real filter, which you shouldn't get because that deprives people who need it from having it. But it, it's real simple to to make and to put in. We've done a bunch of them. Yeah. So Dan and Mark, are our school sites staying secure with um, schools not in session? 
Um, yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> we got one guy that keeps showing up on the cameras, a little thief, but we got the cops chasing him. Yeah, we've had one guy showing up that we're trying to, to catch. And I wish that when the camera went off, it would send me a text message or something so I could drive down there. This dude's showing up like at three o'clock in the morning and five o'clock in the morning and uh, helped himself to a little siphon gas and that kind of stuff. So, Is this happening at a couple of the sites or all at the high school? Pretty much the high school. Yeah. Is this we an have adult? Or? Adult. Go ahead. It's an so adult. It's an adult? Well, it's PDE knows about it. They're doing additional drive-bys. I have one thing I'd like to add beyond this, co along this lines of the COVID that, um, to let Mark and you guys know that we did receive our MOU back from the state, the one that we worked on. Um, and it's all agreed upon uh, on the last um, items that we had on that. So we're all good on that. And um, I just, I wanna thank Laura for working with us to get that done. Yeah. But anyway, you know, the, one of the silver linings is I've asked the teachers to take the kids' stuff and bag it up, especially in K-5. That's pretty common. They have stuff. So they've done that. And in high school and, and K-5, I've asked the teachers to start to pack their room as if we're gone and through the summer. So custodial and maintenance can come in and take care of business and we shouldn't run into a problem with, we didn't have time to get the buildings done this summer. <laughs> yeah, as much as possible, that's for certain. Yeah. Anything else, Dan? Uh, no, I'm good. I just, I got, got a call from the DA and I don't have to go to that trial tomorrow for those kids that trash the school. They seem to settle it. Um, so I just got to send them the bill and stuff like that. And hopefully that gets resolved too. Yeah. Good girl. Dan's referring to some kids at Blosser. It was actually four high school girls who went through Blosser and tore all the screens off on the inside. Um, unfortunately for them, we have cameras. And when you're one of our students, it took probably about 30 seconds to figure out who it was. No. So what, what was the total in damages? I don't know. Dan would know. I picked up the receipt today. It was just a, a smidge and over a thousand dollars. And that was for replacing and repairing all the screen frames that were broken and for them to come back and reinstall everything. Okay. It was very bizarre. They just walked through ripping off every screen on the inside corridor for I have no idea why. I would I would venture they don't know why either. <laughs> <laughs> was this just, fun? Was this just recent or was this a while ago? It um, was uh, March nineteenth of one in the morning. Well, wow. okay. Um, All right. We move on to uh, board comments. Anybody care to go first? Yeah. <laughs> I went to the, you know, I did some cafeteria breakfast and lunch runs, you know, and I just thought that Christy set it up really nicely. Her people, like, I spoke with Andrea and Joyce and some kid whose name I don't know, and I went for the first three or four weeks. It was really nicely done. They were real organized, and they just did a really good job, and um I, I noticed that they were starting, uh, what's she called, Imagination Station so that they could have foods too. Yeah. And the charter school, I don't know if they talked to you or not, but they were wanting to go to the, some of the teachers actually wanted to go and get food for their kids. And they were gonna set up some sort of, I don't know if they ever did, but some sort of deal where Christy and Mark said that we could that they could give out food at like a week at a time, which made it a lot better. You didn't run into people as often and stuff. And if you gave them like the day's notice from a, the day before, they could have it all set up. And they did that. They did it really, really well. So I just thought you should know that that was a big deal and that they did well. And the rest of the stuff, I, 
haven't gone very many places or done very much stuff except to make some masks, but I was making them for, you know, social services. What is that? Social workers and their clients, CPS and those guys. But um, as a last resort, <laughs> if you need some more, let me know because we still have stuff. Okay. I'm done. Thanks. Any other Mr. Colvig? Uh, no comments at this time. Mr. Chavez. I just want to extend my appreciation to all the staff making this time, this difficult time, uh, better for our kids and continuing with our education and the leadership of our, of, um, our superintendent. Thank you very much for your work and stay safe. And Mrs. King? I just, want, I just wanted to say, uh, um, thank uh, all the staff um, for um, just, you know, I mean, this was a quick change and everybody has worked really hard to make it work for the kids and they're putting the kids first and being responsible about providing content for the kids and um, my um and the administrators everybody's doing a really good job and and i really appreciate the um, maintenance crew that work they're doing at this time and um uh, i had a question i know that brookside for each packet each week is sending out that um independent study form yeah each week but blosser is not so they sent one out with the first pack uh, when we first started this, but they haven't been sending them out. I was just wondering if it was required or what. I think Brookside's just doing it out of routine. You only need to sign up for the independent study once. Okay. But, and again, I think they're gonna be pretty lenient on those rules anyway. But yeah, you only need to sign up once. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody's working so hard, and I know Mark uh, is always working hard. So, on uh, the district office staff, everybody's trying to make this work. So, thanks. Yeah, it's uh, it's a definitely a, a strange time. It'll be interesting to see how all this fleshes out over the next six months to a year. I I would argue that uh, that uh, we are seeing the beginning of some significant changes in the way we're going to deliver education to to our kids um, I would argue that uh, this is going to open the door to a lot more distance education models um, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not I also think that that's uh, you know, I'm so sad to say it I think that uh, we're going to see some significant impacts in our budgets if you take a look at uh, the comments that are coming from uh, CSBA and a variety of other school districts um, they are gearing up for a. Uh, um, they're gearing up for a significant uh, hit to their hit to their budgets, and I think it's uh, it's prudent to be smart to be looking for that because I, quite frankly, the the state and the federal governments are incurring huge debt right now, and the coffers are not going to get recovered uh, near as quickly because of the. And let's face it, uh, sales tax is way down. Um, income taxes are going to be way down. Um, and it's going to have an impact on on those state and federal budgets across the board. We happen to be the biggest cost to the state budget. Um, I I just don't see us getting away from this unscathed, quite frankly. And I'm hoping it just I'm hoping it's a much more minor blow, uh, but we'll see. Um, we still don't have uh, WTA on board. No. Okay. No. Um, uh, Mark, go ahead. Okay. So. Let me kind of do a review of a lot of stuff. Um, food service, around 150, I believe, lunches, about 75 breakfast. And Christie's being super accommodating to people. If, if they want to do multi-day, if they want to do that kind of stuff, she's taking care of them. I invited Sabrina's group to come down. So it was you. Sabrina has a... Um, I mean, she's just bleeding money this these months in her program. She's losing probably 25000 a month to try and stay open this way. 
but she's got first responders and healthcare kids that she takes care of and is continuing to do it. We have the tribe, the Red Sherwood tribes coming over and getting food for their kids, um, charter school, how the summer, this program is called Seamless Summer. And literally anybody 18 years or younger can come and get breakfast and lunch. You don't have to be a student at our school. And so that's why I opened it up to charter if they wanted to and other students. Um, we're gonna get reimbursed for all of these. And so ladies have done a great job of rotating through, taking care of business. I still am going to meet with food service and I'm probably gonna do it through like a Camtasia video where I do a PowerPoint and I talk through it about changing over for next year. We still have to do that. That's gonna be a major thing we have to fix before next year. So I'm still gonna put that into place and we'll work through that. Um, in regards to custodial maintenance, guys, custodials are hitting that, all these places we wanted to hit forever. Um, I mean, I think the buildings are going to look great. Um, we are hitting all those maintenance things we've been waiting to do. Um, I, I think we're in a really good place there, and hopefully we can just continue moving on. Um, in regards to paras like for a classroom we really just don't have much for them to do other than some of the paras can help in the special ed office with the filing to get it out into their new storage container and to open up the library for the high school kids. I've had the admins and Jennifer and Rochelle out of my office we've been going over our ADA with a fine tooth comb to make sure we're really clean and good when we submit that. Because the February ADA is what's gonna carry us through the rest of the year, that number. So I'm making sure that number's as legitimate and good as possible. In regards to financial stuff, you know, it's a, we're spending what we were gonna spend the places we're saving some money are probably pretty small when you look at our budget at 80 plus percent being tied up in, in people. But we've turned the heat down. We're not going through diesel gas. We're, there are places where we're not spending what we've spent before. And we've done a pretty good job of not creating expenses during this time also. Um, a couple things with staffing. Laura's getting, we're still hiring people for next year. We still have a, we have the bulk of our positions hired with the exception of a couple special ed positions. We did have another retirement. Um, Patty Dalton retired at Brookside. Again, those are those positions, Patty Dalton and if we have like an EL position or any of those, I'm kind of putting those on the shelf right now. My basic rule of thumb is you don't have a class list assigned to you. We're going to hold off and figure out what we can do. Do we have to do that or can we do it differently? Can we wait? Because I, I know Alex and I have had this conversation before. Is we're going to take a beating financially and we got to be in a position to handle that and the classroom comes first we got to cover those positions first um, other stuff going on LCAP is probably going to just roll into next year you use what you did this year you start up with it next year graduation like I've been very adamant and told people this I don't care if it's the first day of frontier days we're going to have a graduation for kids I'm not sure how we're going to, if we have to have it where we introduce them one at a time and keep them six feet apart, walking across the track, whatever we have to do, it's kind of a rite of passage that we have to perform that with them. The high school teachers are doing a good job of keeping the seniors on track. This shouldn't impact kids not graduating. We won't have that problem. We're not going to hold kids back in second grade because they didn't finish the last 10 weeks. 
we just have to move on. We're going to start third grade in a different place. That's just how it's going to roll. And it's not uncommon to have a kid miss, you know, get in an accident or get hurt or something and miss a couple months. In this case, it's good because it's everybody. So we're going to be fine academically. Um, financially is our real big concern. And we'll just have to play it out. The May revision in a, by the governor is still going to happen. We'll see what he has to say. And probably by the end of the May, there'll be another revision to that. But we're going into next year assuming that we're going to lose some revenue. And we have to be geared up the right way to take care of that. And Laura and I are working staff-wise to make sure that happens. You know, so we're not running out and creating new positions. Anytime we have a retirement or an opening, if it's not a classroom teacher, we're putting it to the side right now. Uh, let me think, did I? Just the teacher, you guys have said it too. Teachers are doing a great job of keeping kids on task and putting great assignments out. I get really cool stuff that I've been able to post now and then. Um, the truth is, is that we probably gained five years of technology skills in three weeks with our teachers. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe that's one of the silver linings we'll get out of this. I think people also found out that it's a little harder to educate your kid than they might have thought. And I think we also found out that nothing replaces being in a classroom with a teacher. The screens are not what the teacher is, so. Yeah, well, that's pretty obvious just by, go, just by doing a meeting under, via Zoom. It's not yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Um, Mark, do you, do you or Nikki have um, access to anybody over at the state level that can give us even a, a glimpse into that crystal ball as to what's gonna happen financially? I don't think that there's really any good basis for anyone who is trying to make projections. This is so unprecedented. Um, I've heard a range of things. I've heard that because of how late in the year we are, that there is some possibility that we would still maintain some type of COLA for next year. But I personally feel very, I guess, doubtful that would come to fruition and so what we have talked about is that in terms of revenue budgeting we will be looking at multiple models so um, if when we do budget adoption you know we will have a primary adopted budget but we will present other scenarios at different levels of funding so that we can have a clear idea of different possible roads that we're going to be traveling. Yeah, I don't think yep. you'll ever see us at a point unless it's late next year saying, okay, we feel good about where our funding is and we can do these things. I'm going to make sure that we do what we have to do, not, not our nice to do list. Our nice to do list has to be sitting down for a while, but you know, we'll, we'll see. The governor's been very quiet about next year, although he's consumed with what's going on now. We're kind of in a place where everybody knows the gig of what's going on. His biggest issues now are lack of tax revenue for next year and how to reopen and the primary way to reopen. So I think he's well, going to like, focus on Like you, focus. I think that the recovery from this will be fairly fast. However, uh, there's a price to be paid and the question is is it going to be pay me now or pay me later um, I'm I'm concerned that um, that it's well one of the articles I just read today suggested that the leg state legislature will probably come back into session at some point during uh, during the spring or the summer and take a closer look at this budget issue um, because again it's the the state and the federal governments are spending enormous amounts of money um, trying to keep things status quo, and at some point, um, that all get, that all gets to, somebody's got to pay the bill sooner or later. Yeah, only the feds can print it without needing any, without needing to get it back. The state exactly. can't do that. The state has to get revenue. 
So were there any major changes being made to any of the programs in the district? No. The Everything's only, kind of going to stay the way it was? Well, the issue that, that I have right now is, I'll give you an example at Blosser. At Blosser, we need a third or fourth grade teacher. I have, through Nancy and through Laura, I have told um, has checks that they're going to be doing third or fourth grade. The oh, ELL uh -huh. position, I have to fill the third grade position for sure. Yeah. And and it's really, you know, having Janice in third grade as a bonus, she's probably our best. Third grade. She's done it, yeah. And so I've told her that assume that that is going to be your assignment. I'm not filling the EL position until we have to. Yeah. At Brookside, mm -hmm. Patty Dalton's position is open, but I haven't filled that yet. We've posted it internally. Okay. We also had a position with our re an intervention and unlocking the code person okay. at the side that I've not filled and don't intend to fill until our budget makes sure that we can do that. At Bechtel, I reworked the schedule with Maria and we're able to go down a teacher at Bechtel. At the high school, we actually are in a position where we're plus because their number is higher, it keeps growing. Their number is not going down, it's going up all the time. Okay. But I am trying to work out some other options with some of the staff, our itinerant staff. Um, the counties talked to me about options and so, I'm looking at any way I can to save funding by not hiring this staff until we have to, until we know it's safe to do it. Because mm -hmm. I can't jeopardize the classroom to have yeah, something else. Yeah. Well, okay, that's what I was curious about. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Um, anything further, Mark? No, I think it took enough time. Okay, so... Uh, um, Public comments for uh, the uh, uh, on the agenda items. Do we have anybody actually watching for public comments? Yes, I w I'm trying to run my tech at the same time. <laughs> I'm not getting any comments coming in, so. So we haven't got it. Does it via email or how is that working? It's a like a Google survey form. Okay. And if we do get some. I will respond to them and CC everybody on them, the board members on that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, entertain a, um, a motion to approve the consent agenda. I can move that. to approve the agenda. So I got Paula and, and Robert Chavez. Yes. Okay. So Paula for the, uh, the move and second by Robert. Either way. And this, do we have any discussion of the consent agenda? Hearing no discussion, <laughs> we'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Aye. Uh, everybody pass? Okay. So. Robert was consent. a little late on his eye. Okay, so, but there are no, uh, no disapprovals? Okay. Uh, now we'll go to approval of resolution 2019-20-14 uh, pupil textbooks, the comprehensive health grades nine through 12. So any discussion with respect to that resolution? I just want to say I went over to the district office and uh, borrowed it actually the book uh, overnight and looked through it and I thought it uh, was um, a, a good textbook. I thought it covered things well and um, I thought it um, was well organized and, and I thought it was a, um, will be a good addition to our um, instruction at the high school. It is approved by the state as a book to use. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to uh, for the approval of resolution 2019-20-14. I move we approve. 
I item second. C. I second. Okay, it's moved by Mr. Kolvig, seconded by Jeannie, I believe. Um, any further discussion? Uh, call for the vote, all in favor? Aye. 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 And I believe this is a roll call vote, I'm sorry. All right. So, so let's start off with uh, Mr. Kolvig. Aye. Uh, Jeannie. Aye. Mr. Chavez. Aye. Uh, and uh, Paula. Aye. And myself, aye. The item D is approval of resolution 2019-20-15, uh, suspend in-person classes uh, under COVID-19. Um, you wanna give us some discussion on that, Mark? Yeah, um, this is this is our board's decision to do that. We're not forced by the state to be in it, but we are closing in-person classes. We're not, the school is not closed. I remind people when they say, oh, well, you're done with school, school's closed. I tell them, no, school is still open, but we're not doing in-person classes. And this is a resolution that the board does to say that they're approving doing non-classroom instruction during this time until the governor gives us the the green light to meet we're gonna not be able to meet the biggest discussion in this area is going to probably come in a couple weeks what if we can meet with 10 people at a time in a room do we bring kids half of the first graders in from a class the other half the next day how do we do that? How do you keep them separated at lunch and recess? High school might be an easier way to do that than it would be. I can't imagine having kindergartners in preschool and trying to keep social distance. Are they actually talking about doing something like that? They have. They have. My advice would be is if we do it, we would maybe experiment with bringing the seniors in first like with the high school because there are there are primary concern right now well i hope we use some good good judgment here with respect to all of this not just to here in our district but um but uh you know statewide or even nationwide um the the news coming out of japan for example hokkaido uh, basically went back to they relaxed a bunch of these restrictions opened up their schools they ended up with a second wave of, yeah. of, of infections, and now they've closed their schools again. Um, I'm so, definitely not in favor of doing that. Yeah, there's, I mean, quite frankly, if, what's the difference between opening it up for 10 kids at a time or 30 kids at a time? If we're going to open schools, we need to open schools. But realistically, we should open schools when it's safe to do so and not a moment before. Right. And if it's made, if it's May 25th, does it make sense to come for nine days? No, no other, not other than to prepare for graduation. Right, <laughs> if, if that's the case, we'll prepare for graduation with just the seniors and we can use the auditorium and keep social distance for the senior class. Right. So my, my hope is, is that nobody goes crazy and said, well, let's try and salvage the last week of school. No, it's it's pointless to do something like that. Too little, too late. At least that's my opinion. Yeah, this is a resolution by the board just approving that we're doing our our non-traditional classroom scenario. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to approve item D? Resolution I, move, I move that we approve item and D, uh, um, approve resolution um, 2019-2020-15, suspend in-person classes, COVID-19. Do we have a second? second? Mr. Kolvig seconds? Okay. Yes. I'm, Any I'm further discussion? Bob, Bob looks pretty good sitting outside there. He looks pretty comfortable. <laughs> I was doing great, but the wind was picking up up here in Brook Trail. So, um, so any further discussion on this? Okay, we'll call for the vote. Um, Mr. Kolvig. Aye. Mr. Chavez. Uh, 
Uh, one more time, Mr. Chavez. Hold on. Aye. Okay. Um, Ms. King. Aye. Um, Ms. Aye. Nunez. And myself, aye. Okay, moving on to item E, discussion board policy um, uh, uh, 3515 campus security. So this is one that we brought back. We had talked about it before. Paula had some suggestions. I ran it past our attorney and Alex and I and Paula had a discussion on it and I sent you a revision on that that you looked at. It's yep. not an action item, so it can't be a first read, but I think it's a good opportunity to kind of hash it out and figure out what we're going to do with it and where we're going to go. And if we can figure out that plan, we'll put it on the next agenda as a first read. And get it. It's obviously not a pressing issue right now. And, and I, I agree. Um, uh, I don't have a copy of it in front of me. Does that is it? Uh, did, you, did you did you email out a, a more recent uh, version of it, Mark? Yeah, I sent it out a few days ago. Okay, probably three or four days ago. But it's been but mine, would, mine only came up as picking something to hit on. It didn't show the policy. I don't know why, but um, so maybe that happened to yours. Um, well. I don't know. It was weird. It came up, um, it only said mail, email, print out, different, well, maybe that was different ways to open it or something. I don't know. Probably. Let me, uh, yeah. okay. I can share screen, okay. Oh, well, I have Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, Alex does it, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm oh. looking at it, Mark, the, the email that you sent out, um, and it uh, it won't come up for me. Yeah, see, it wouldn't. It only me. comes up as 91. Uh, 91,000 uh, bytes. So, so, oh, there it is. Looking at that, mm -hmm. there we go. I see it. Okay, I, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. We don't need, we know that it's board policy 3515. Yep. And the top part of it is all pretty standard. Nothing's different there. It's the rationale of why you have cameras. Yeah, and the the sort of, I don't know why that's there. What's that? Under surveillance systems. I think it just sort of copied itself twice. Oh, there's an extra the there? Yeah. Yeah, oh, Trino can't that part. Oh, yeah. She can't see. So, no, I can't make it go down either, but. No, I can, I can make, I'm the only one. Who oh, can, you're in control of it? Oh. You're viewing my laptop screen. Oh, okay, okay. So can you read that bottom one? It says prior to the operation. Yeah, and I, I had a question about that. Did the signs come in or are you waiting on all of this to be okay? Well, I have to wait for us to okay these. I didn't. Oh, okay. I did because more this... signs because we don't have a policy that says use this sign. Right, but it all, it just looked like it said prior to the operation of the system, well, the sort of system is going, so the system is going, but it'll, I guess, I don't know. And so were you able to take any of the audio out of it? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go, go ahead and scroll down a little, scroll that up a little bit further, Mark. Up? Like yeah. This, oh, this way? The other, yeah, the other way, keep going. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see, I see what I what my screen is. I don't see what you see. But Paula, we've had cameras for seven plus years and we have signage, but it's, yeah. it's not very good signage and it's really old. And at this point it's pretty faded out even. So I think the thought all along was we were gonna replace signage. I haven't done it until we agree to it. Okay. So, but that's the plan. And so you're leaving all the audio equipment in it except for that break room in the bus barn or the office room or whatever you call what you call it at the bus barn? Well, the audio is built into the camera. I know. Okay. It's not, it's not something that you, it's not like an additional piece you buy. 
Mm -hmm. So when you buy cameras now, it's it would be rare to find a camera that wasn't audio video. In fact, it'd probably be an expensive special order. The issue is, do you click on record or not record? Not whether the camera has a, a capability. But in regard to the, the room there, that's the only camera, as I've said before, the transportation area is the only place where it's monitoring essentially adults. It's, it's really not a, it's a security camera. It's not even a school student safety issue. It's a, it's a security camera system. Yeah, well, that this is on the school, right? What happened there? Right. The important thing is in there is the statement about the superintendent prior to being viewed by anyone else must be must approve the use of the video. And it's also that the surveillance system will only be reviewed by the superintendent or building site level administrator of the recording. What that means is that Maria is not going to be looking at the transportation building. And, you know, it's before they use it for something, they need to notify me that they're going to use it for something. Oh, okay. Because, well, there's, <laughs> there's policy and practice that go into place with that as well. You never well, show a parent something that happens with their child if there's other kids involved can be really good so yeah so what i'm doing is putting in a a layer of security to make sure that the videos are it is used by the superintendent's approval and that we make sure that the people viewing we're not giving access to everybody on the planet to view the high school cameras Mike and Marion view the cameras, but before they use it, they need to let me know. Yeah. Okay. But we don't, have, so, we don't have anybody sitting there staring at screens at cameras all day long. No, not it's, at all. So my, the point I'm trying to get at here is the only time we would actually legitimately look at that footage um, is, is, is in arrears. We're looking for, uh, we're trying to validate either a complaint or an issue or something something that, that occurred or follow back to see if there was, we can determine who did the vandalism, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. Um, or we if there was a monitor so, this. So yeah. it could be monitored. The, the real answer is it's never monitored. Yeah. I mean, so. somebody could be dancing in front of the camera right now and I would have no idea. In fact, and so, oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Well, it says the superintendent or designee shall also provide prior notification to whomever about the surveillance system. That means like at the beginning of the year when you send out all that, when all those papers are sent out, that um, there will be a paper in there explaining that? Yeah, it'll, what I'm, oh, okay. I'm envisioning, Paula, is that it's oh. part of the student handbook and part of the okay. information we let students and parents know. Okay. That you know, our, our sites are under review. Okay. And the other, there's the statement right at the, at the top there, the superintendent or designee shall identify appropriate locations for the placement of surveillance cameras. Cameras shall mm -hmm. not be placed in areas where students, staff, or community it's, members have a reasonable expectation mm -hmm. of privacy. Now, Paula, we may disagree on what areas. What is reasonable? Yeah, or, or where, where, but, for, you know, again, I have to defer to what our our district's legal counsel tells us with respect to that particular room over at the bus bar. As far as I'm concerned, if our if our if our legal people say that it's okay to have that in there and record, then uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's going to stay that way until uh, until somebody challenges us in uh, through a legal process and we are told something different. Yeah. I we'll probably disagree uh, and that's okay that's we're, we've got every right to do that the difference though is uh we have the, the district's legal advice tells us that we are on firm ground 
Uh, and I'm more focused on, I mean, we had one issue in the break room. I'm more focused on the 50 times we've used it for vandalism, whose car hit what car, you know, who's crawling around the building in the middle of the night. So I don't want to- And those are real good. They're not inside a little room is all. I just don't see any reason for looking for trouble, but if that's what you prefer, that's okay. It, it takes care of itself. Yeah, and again, and I would argue we're not looking for trouble. That's I, not the issue. I don't know. Well, I'm never looking at it. I am the only one who has access besides Dakota to all of the cameras. Yeah, that's that's a question um, too. But well, Tech has to. Have he's access. your designee, or just saying that he's the one who needs to work on them. He works on them. He's there are times when I ask Dakota to go on a camera and look right, at that's one because I know. Yeah, if it's a one o'clock in the morning break in, he'll go in uh -huh. and find it for me. If it's a kid who's lost, those kind of things. Yeah, I don't ask him to go in and look at, you know, um, yesterday's footage. What's going on in the science room right now at the high school? You know, I don't. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't do that. I occasionally go on the cameras and look for something if I think there's a problem, but mm -hmm. it's very rare. And I always only go there because it's potentially problematic. I don't go there just, um, I used to be a high school principal where we had the cameras for the building on a big TV and they scrolled through the, all the pictures of the cameras all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, is that a deterrent? Maybe. Uh, does it teach the kids where the cameras are? Absolutely. <laughs> so. Well, you know, there's another statement, if I recall in here, and that was cameras may or may not be, um, uh, you know, under, under, you know, be, be viewed at any given time. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, That's so, right. Uh, and that is also right in the sign. Let me, let me click up the signage. I'll show you what the signage says. Yeah, cameras may or may not be actively monitored at any time. I think that's yeah, that's that's very prudent. Yeah, that could be. I've heard on occasion that certain employees that's felt that, Can you see that their schedules had been checked or that they were monitored, and I just I just hate to see that that's a case. Even if it's a shortcut for information, I just I don't think it has any good value, and I just. I just like to see it used strictly for school safety and school, you know, protecting the property. But I, I really don't think it's good that people would think they were under surveillance to check their shifts or if they did or didn't go to work or anything like that. You know, I just, and that's a big concern too. Well, and I, I would, yeah, but I guess the point I'm trying to get at here, Paul, is if people are if people are coming to work and doing their jobs there's there's nothing to be worried it's it's kind of like when you walk into redwood credit union if you walk into redwood credit union there's no less than 11 cameras staring at every freaking nook and cranny of that building uh -huh. you're just basically on you're on notice to be on good behavior exactly that's a good thing the bad thing is when there isn't anything i mean no one tells you we're observing shifts today instead of doing real evaluations. And I, I, just, I just don't think that comes to any good. It, you know, I'm of the age group, I guess, where we didn't want to see Big Brother. And I, this is exactly what that's up with. Well, there, sorry, but okay. But it, you know, it works out. You just have to try it a while and nothing is in such concrete that it can't be modified. That's a fact. Yeah, and I I do use this if I think that I have used this if I think mm -hmm. people are leaving early, coming late, showing up when super late. Yeah, it, why wouldn't I use it? Yeah, it's another tool for the administration. So I've heard from Paula. You guys have heard from me. Um, we have three other board members that have been suspiciously quiet. Can we get anybody <laughs> else to chime in? Yeah. 
Well, I think if the sign is posted in the area, then it's, it's self-explanatory. In the areas of the cameras, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think they're pretty generically posted throughout because you're not going to put 25 of them in the high school. You're going to post them as you come onto the site and as, as you come in so people clearly know that this site is being mined. Well, that's good. Jeannie or Mr. And Shires? I agree that the cameras, uh, the cameras, the cameras um, are a deterrent and they are helpful for investigations after the fact. Um, most people know there's cameras, they know how to behave and they do a lot more good than they do anything uh, bad or wrong. Yeah, I agree. Most of the most of the camera work that we use is always almost exclusively after the fact. Okay. I need to figure out how to bring un unshare my screen. <laughs> it's okay. All right, I'll get there in a second. Oh, that. <laughs> if you can, you can continue your discussion. I'm going to try and figure it out here for a second. Hey, Mark. Yeah, I so I just, I just wanted to say this is off topic, but not off topic, but it combines two topics. There's a wonderful article in today's Wall Street Journal about how coronavirus is eroding privacy. And it goes extensively into how different governments from all over the world are using um, surveillance methods to, um, to, um, uh, to trace coronavirus and who's been exposed, who they contacted, and who they came in contact with. I thought it was a fascinating article. And, I read something similar to that. And the concern is, is that with government overreach, this is not, I'm not talking about just the United States, but all over the world, uh, in order to uh, deal with the coronavirus uh, epidemic, is that um, the governments are not going to cut back once coronavirus is uh, under control and that these um, surveillance methods will just be part of um, everyday life. Everyday life. Anyway, it's a fascinating article. So I just wanted to recommend that you look it up. It has to do with COVID-19, which we've been talking about, and surveillance, which we've been talking about. So anyway, it was an interesting article. Yeah, they were utilizing um, cell phone data to determine where, where and when people are moving. People were going places, yeah. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. So. They were using Bluetooth, which they're saying doesn't transmit any personal data, but it's not hard to imagine that you can go beyond that in a hurry. Exactly. Okay. Um, so if we're done with the uh, discussion, so let's go ahead and bring that uh, policy to uh, the next month's board meeting as a first read, Mark. Okay. okay. And uh, we'll try and get that thing wrapped up. Uh, do we have any public comments for items not on the agenda? Uh, any public comments yet, Mark? Let me look. I was wondering if I, if it was possible to comment on uh, campus security. Certainly. Um, there, there is a couple issues. Um, the cameras that are in transportation office were put in there because there was um, some employees were complaining that some paperwork was being taken and altered. So that's why one of them was put in. And I believe that same camera is facing the direction of where the paperwork is. And it's facing a TV that has all of the um, uh, the uh, the field trip monitoring because all that's done remotely, putting it up there for everybody to see. Um, we have had um, the cameras themselves at each site. The only people who have access to them are, I believe, is the principal and vice principal of each site, um, other than Mark and I believe IT. Um, so anybody else just can't look at them. Um, we have had some matters where there were some discipline issues that came up with some classified employees because it was uh, a he said, she said 
about some students complaining about being harassed and other things by classified staff. And the cameras did relate during the investigation that it wasn't that way, that it was a student saying something to get his way and the staff did not do anything. So it was very helpful in that. Um, and the CCA does not approve of the cameras being used as a, so to speak, time clock. And that has come up in discussions before, and that is not being used that way. So I just, to add those few tidbits to that conversation. Thank you. So I guess from a CSEA standpoint, you guys really don't have a beef with these cameras. The only beef that has ever come up if there is a camera that's used to do monitoring of employees in a work site for some reason, and that's come from the state, that they don't like that. And it's not a good thing. And we've never had that issue happen with that here. Um, okay. It's pretty much what we've have had it used as it has been a great helper in stopping discipline against CSEA employees because of people saying stuff that they did something and it actually reflected that they did not do that. Okay. Sounds good. I'd much prefer that they're used in a beneficial manner. That's for certain. Um, so back on to public comments for not on the agenda. I have one comment. Fire away. Uh, it's, it's good to see Bob back in our county. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's pretty relaxed at this board meeting. This might be his most relaxed board meeting. I haven't seen him sneak away though. Usually he sneaks no. away. No, I'm in good shape. All right. So any other comments there, Mark, we need to worry about? No, we did not have any other responses online. Okay, I'm moving back to the next page. And um, I think we're got items for next regular board meeting. We've, we put the uh, um, that board policy on there. And uh, if anybody else has anything, uh, feel free to reach out to either Mark or myself. I wanted to suggest, uh, I had um, Trina make me a print copy of the binder, and I got the binder. It um, works out better, I think, with these online meetings to have a print copy to refer to than trying to access, mm -hmm. than to try to access <laughs> Uh, something that's electronically on your computer at the same time that you're appearing on your computer. So I just want to suggest that for future board meetings, as long as we're doing these Zoom board meetings, that we also have print um, binders like we usually do. Yeah, I'll echo that can sentiment I, as well. Can I share a picture that I saw today on my walk? Can you guys see it? Oh, I can't see it. Uh, hold it steady. I can't see it. Well, it says, steady, I miss... Oh, okay. I can't okay. see what the sign says. Oh, I miss you. First, something. First graders. Rock. Oh. It, it, it's uh, in a teacher's yard, and it says, I miss you, first graders. Rock, keep reading. Miss Kino Josa uh, from, from Bechtel, I mean, from Brookside. Uh, oh, perfect. Nice. And it's in her yard, and I just thought that was kind of cool. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. I walk pretty much every night. I go for a walk and I invariably now have at least three staff members or more that I see when I'm going out. I think they see people coming and they're coming out of their house to talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's plenty of folks going stir crazy with this, that's for certain. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, adjourn unless anybody has anything further. Oh, hey, I just want to give you one other. Hand sanitizer is available now in Willits. <laughs> <laughs> Only at the gas station across from the high school. And really? I, can't, I can't make this up. It's in a little bottle about this size. It's like mm -hmm. 10 ounces. It was nine seventy-five a bottle. Yeah, that tells Those you something 50 about 50 cents a piece. God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah it I, is what, hand sanitizer, you don't need. 
wash your hands with standard soap and water. There you go. Take, take at least 15, 20, 30 seconds to do it. Everything's fine. You don't yeah. need hand sanitizer. I could have got four and a half gallons of gas or 10 ounces of hand sanitizer. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, the hand sanitizer is largely just alcohol anyway. Yeah. Um, and I prefer to drink mine. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Alex. <laughs> All right. Uh, so a motion to adjourn before I get in trouble. I move we adjourn. Seconded by. Me. Paula. By Paula. Mm -hmm. yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Good night, everybody. Thank Good you. Night. Bye. Is the thing now leave meeting? Oh,